Hi there, welcome to Joyce on YouTube. Don't forget to join us on the Joyce Meyer app and at JoyceMeyer.org for more of what you're about to see and lots of great content to help you in your everyday life. Thanks so much for joining us. Unforgiveness also hinders our faith from working in prayer. Well, I mean, just, this, just these one group of scriptures, Mark 11, 23 through 25, should be enough to urge us to just get on our knees and forgive anyone. And you say, well, I've tried, I've tried, and I just can't help how I feel. You can't help how you feel. But the thing you gotta understand about forgiveness is it's not a feeling, it's a decision. You not only decide to forgive, you pray for God to give you the grace to be able to do it. You follow that up by praying for the person. And I can tell you, God showed me a long time ago, somebody that you pray for regularly, it is impossible to stay mad at them and keep hating them. Come on, you weren't convinced. Somebody you pray for on a regular basis. You may start out angry at them, you may start out doing it in faith, but eventually if you continue, God will work something in your heart and you will not be able to stay angry at them. And a lot of people try to forgive, but they don't go to the next step and pray. Then the next step, and these are all scriptural, forgive your enemies, pray for them, and bless them. You say, well, I don't want them to be blessed. <laughs> well, I get that. I've told God that, you know, I, I'm gonna pray this by faith, but I'm having a hard time wanting you to actually bless them. But here's the thing, and, and God spoke this to my heart. When you pray for God to bless your enemies, if it's somebody that has truly wronged you, the first thing he will bless them with is seeing what they did and coming to a place of repentance. So when we pray for God to bless somebody, that's not necessarily praying that they'll have more money or they'll get a better job. We're praying that they will be restored to fellowship with God, that they will see what they did and they'll make lifestyle changes. And then let me just take this one step further because I have found this to be very true in my own life. The next thing that I would do, if you have somebody that would fit into the enemy category, you forgive them, you pray for them, you pray, you pray for them to be blessed, and if they have a need, Uh, yeah, she's saying, no, don't tell me, no, 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 oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Then you help them. Ooh, painful. You're like, well, why should I do that? Because you're a child of God, and that's what he does. He helps people that don't deserve it. He helps people that have ignored him their whole life. And then when they need help, cry out to him, he helps. And besides that, if somebody's really treated you bad, they know they did. And they will be totally shocked when you're good to them. And what it does is it breaks the hardness off of their heart. And it gives them an opportunity to come to know Christ. Truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt at all in his heart, but believes that what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you, and you will get it. And <laughs> whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, Forgive him, let it drop, leave it, let it go, in order that your Father who is in heaven may also forgive you your own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. So what's he saying? When you pray the prayer of faith and you don't doubt, God will answer your prayer. You believe and then you will get it. It doesn't say you'll get it right that minute, but you will get it. There's always some patience involved with faith, some waiting. But we can't leave off that last section. And when you're gonna pray like this, make sure you're not mad at anybody. <laughs> Come on, make sure you're not mad at anybody. 
Make sure you're not mad at anybody. <laughs> Does anybody need this message tonight? Now, another parable. A compassionate master. The king had compassion and forgave a debt that could not be paid. Matthew 18, 23 through 27. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a human king who wished to settle accounts with his attendants. When he began the accounting, one was brought to whom owed him 10,000 talents, probably $10 million. And because he could not pay, those are the key words in this verse. He could not pay, he could not pay, he could not pay. See, a lot of times when people have hurt us, we want them to pay us back. But many times they can't give you back what they took. My father sexually abused me. He stole my innocence. He stole my childhood. He could never give me that back. It was gone. He couldn't give it back to me. But God could make me childlike in my 50s and 60s. See, God is the only one that can pay you back for what people have done to you. But he won't if you keep hating them. Amen. I not only wanted my dad to pay me back, I tried to make every man in the world pay me back. I had an attitude about men. Come on, ladies. Some of you have been hurt by a man, and now you have an attitude toward all men. Come on, I know you're out there. Don't act like you're not. Well, it's not even fair to try to make them pay you for something that somebody else took from you. They can't pay you. Only God can pay you. Stop trying to collect from people and go to God. Because he could not pay his master, ordered him to be sold with his wife and his children and everything that he possessed and payment to be made. So the attendant fell down on his knees, begging him, have patience with me and I'll pay you everything. And his master's heart was moved with compassion and he released him and forgave him, canceling the debt. Now that's a beautiful story, isn't it? And then there's several verses that I could read you about how God is so merciful and gracious and God is so quick to forgive and you know, all the things that he does for us. But then the story continues and it says, but that same attendant, Matthew 18, 28, but that same attendant as he went out found one of his fellow attendants who owed him a hundred denarii, about $20. So here's a guy who's been forgiven for $10 million. Now he finds a guy that owes him 20 bucks. <laughs> so he's making a comparison here. What we need to forgive people for compared to what I need to forgive you for, the Lord says, is like $10 million compared to $20. He caught him by the throat and said, pay me what you owe me. So his fellow attendant fell down and begged him, give me time and I'll pay you all. Now I want you to watch the dumbness of anger. But he was unwilling and he went out and had him put in prison until he should pay the debt. I never saw this before, but you know what, what I thought today? He threw the guy in prison where he had no hope of making any money or working. <laughs> so therefore he said, I'm gonna put you in prison till you pay me back. But there was no way he could pay him back as long as he was in there. Wow, double dumb. <laughs> when his fellow attendants saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed and they went and told the master everything that had taken place. Then his master called him and said to him, you contemptible and wicked servant. Wow, does God think we're contemptible and wicked when we refuse to forgive people? I forgave and canceled all of your debt because you asked me to. And should you not have had pity and mercy on your fellow attendant as I had pity and mercy on you? Come on, we're having a hard time forgiving somebody. These are scriptures that are good. These are go-to scriptures. Because if you can't convince yourself, the word will convince you. The word has inherent power in it. 
And you need to know scriptures like this or have books full of scriptures like this where you fight the good fight of faith with the Word of God. The Word of God is the sword of the Spirit and it's one of our main weapons against the devil. And in wrath, his master turned him over to the torturers till he should pay all that he owed. So also my heavenly Father will deal with every one of you if you do not freely forgive your brother from your heart his offenses. So he's basically saying, if you're not gonna forgive, you're gonna be the one that's gonna end up tortured. And how many of you know, if you spend your life bitter, resentful, angry, and hating people because of something that somebody did to you, it pretty much destroys your life. Does anybody know that? And some of you have had some terrible things done to you, but you have continued to let that person who hurt you, you've continued to let them hurt you over and over and over and over again all these years. And I'm telling you, tonight it's time for you to be free. Tonight it's time for you to make a decision to let it go, give it to God, make a decision, pray for them, bless them, and if you have opportunity, you say, well, I just don't know about the help. In fact, I just don't know if I can do that. I invite you to join me in the Joyce Meyer app or at JoyceMeyer.org. Today, for more on this topic and other teachings, I believe God will use these to help you in your everyday life. I'll look forward to seeing you there.